Good morning and welcome to St. Philip's in the Hills. My name is Mother Taylor Devine and it is a joy to be with you this morning. I have just a couple announcements to make uh, before we begin. And if you'd like to refer to the announcements, they're just in the very back of your bulletin. Um, just in about an hour, there is going to be a newcomer conversation in the gallery. The gallery can be found just past the fish pond. So don't fall into the fish pond, but just go past it. And you'll find Father Robert waiting there to talk to anyone who is newer to St. Philip's. If you'd like to learn more about this community or if you'd like to get to know Father Robert a little bit, our rector, he'll be in the gallery. In addition, at 1015, all youth will be meeting in the Salvia Room, which is in La Parroquia, the little building right across the, the drive. So that's all youth, 6th through 12th grade. Um, this afternoon, there is Choral Evensong at, starting at 415, right here. So come back for Choral Evensong this afternoon. And there's a few other dates that are coming up quickly. I can't believe March is coming soon, but I hope you'll particular, particularly look at the dates for Ash Wednesday and for an opportunity for acolytes and lectors to be trained um, to join us in this service. I hope you'll consider joining us in early March. We'll begin in just a moment. Welcome.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. that without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour it into our hearts, your greatest gift, which is love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue, without which whoever lives is accounted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me and do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them, and after that his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from Corinthians. Someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? For what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, and what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor and raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are, who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus said, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? 
For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you leave, if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just, as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, use us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. The gospel which you have just heard from Luke says, I tell you to listen. I tell you to listen. Almost as if Jesus is saying to the others that there are a whole bunch of people who are going to listen. They're going to hear with their ears and then they'll go off and do whatever they want to do. I want you to listen. Those who know me understand that I talk a lot about listening because I think it's the key to our relationships with one another. That when you listen to me, really listen, that means you're present to me. You experience me. Oh, that makes me feel good. And when I do that same to you, when I listen to you with my whole being, I experience you. And it's a relationship that can be made in no other way. So here is Jesus who is saying, I want you to listen. These are hard words, difficult words that I will say to you. To listen is to experience them, to be present to them, not just to hear them. So I invite you this morning to listen. Love your enemy. That's a hard word. Not those people who are somehow overseas out there but the enemies that are within us and around us and near us in our lives, in our families, in our communities. Love your enemy. Pray for your abusers. One strikes you on one cheek, turn the other also. If one wants your coat, give him your shirt. Love your enemy. Listen. Listen. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We know those words, those words of the golden rule. Treat others as you would have them treat you. God is merciful. Be merciful. 
Karen Armstrong a few years ago, using the words mercy, came up with the concept of compassion. Karen Armstrong is a well-known writer of spiritual books. And back in 2008, she created a national compassion movement. That's what mercy is, it's compassion. Her book, The Twelve Steps of Compassion, lead us the way to take care of one another. And she said, if we do that, the world will be changed. It's an, a change of attitude. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Be compassionate as you would have people be compassionate to you. Listen to my words, she said. Experience them. We know that story. It's not new to us about the man who is beaten and burglarized, robbed on the side of the road, left to dead. His blood there. People walk by. They just walk by. There are people like him who would look at him. Okay, nod. He must be hurt. They walk by. The person who stopped was different than he was. He showed compassion. He found his wounds. He took him and put him in a place where he could heal. He was compassionate. He did to that person what he wanted to be done to him. Compassionate is caring. It is an attitude that we carry with us. Listen, Jesus said. Listen. With your ears, but with your whole being. And forgive. Maybe that's the hardest of all to forgive. The past couple of years during COVID, I've had the opportunity to nationally on Zoom speak to conferences all over the world. On forgiveness. I found out more than anything else that forgiveness is difficult. It is a choice, and nobody has to forgive anybody. But if you carry around the wounds and the abuse and the hurts and the pain, and you carry that around, then it hurts us inside, in our heart. <clears throat> forgiveness is letting go in our heart. It's letting no. The other person may not even know that you've forgiven. It's not something that you do for somebody else. Forgiveness is something you do for yourself. It's not forgetting. It's not exoneration. It's not even reconciliation because it may not happen. But forgiveness changes who we are in relationship to the world. And Jesus says, listen. Forgive with your whole being. The story is told of Olga and Henry. They'd been married a long time when Henry had an affair. He left and left Olga. And she was just devastated. Her life was turned upside down. She carried around in her the bitterness and the anger and the hurt and the sadness that is so much a part of something like that. And she just... It was almost as if every time she thought of him and thought of the anger and the bitterness, a rock fell into a backpack on her back. One after another, after another, until she no longer could stand. Her body twisted out of sadness. Only as she began to let go, only as she began to let go of the the hurts. She began to forgive. Instead of carrying it around in her heart, she let it go. Once again, could stand and live. It's not easy to forgive. You're carrying around something even today. Forgive. Listen. What do we get out of all of this? How do we, what do we get out of loving our enemies and being compassionate and 
doing to others like we want them to do to us and forgiving. We get off, we, Jesus says, we get more, we get more than we give, always. I invite you this morning to listen. And I even invite you this afternoon when you go home to open the Gospel of Luke once again and read this passage. It is at the heart of the kingdom of God the very heart of the teaching. An old song says, love is something if you give it away. Give it away if you give it away. Love is something if you give it away because you end up having more. Oh, I believe that. So listen, listen, my friends. Oh, man. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God. Let us pray for the church and for the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for All Saints Church and Day School, Phoenix. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honour and glory. Lord, in your mercy. 
Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set up, set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome again to St. Philip's. In just a moment, we will share communion, and you'll be invited to come forward at, to the altar rail by the ushers, who will release you pew by pew. I just have a few notes about that. Um, one of them is, if you'd like to come forward and receive a blessing, but not communion, we invite you to do so, just cross your arms. And if you would prefer to just receive um, the bread, just kind of whisper that to us. And if you would prefer to receive gluten-free communion, we have that as well, if you would just let us know that that is what you need. If you would prefer to receive communion in your seat, just let the ushers know that as well. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is Lord. Christ is Lord. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
almighty and ever-living God. We thank you Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The Eucharist has ended. <coughs> the service begins. Go in peace to love and serve. Thanks. 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 Thanks.